Cool. So, um, talking about kind of that transition. So, what did you? What are you in, ended up doing now, and and kind of what's your path to that? And I know it hasn't been the the longest since you've separated. It hasn't been like ten years or anything. But kind of where are you at? What are you doing? So I got hired on from uh, the Fort Walton Beach location to be a program manager with one of the Air Force's cyber training units. So we have a solution set that we offer the Air Force and we install for them it's kind of a privatized cloud environment that they can hook their cyber ranges up to and teach students attack the defense scenarios uh, for cyber training. And I started with this in the first six months uh, it was kind of really my focus. I got a condo in the Fort Walton Beach area, even though that's not where the wife and I were looking to relocate. It's rough. And I, you know, I was there Monday through Friday. My my house was only two hours away, so on the weekends I would end up driving back home to be with the family. Um, and within that first six month period, we had a problem on another program in which they floated a lot of us over in order to come fix where our company was doing work with the U.S. Census Bureau, where we were provisioning all the products that they were, the census workers were using uh, to conduct the census. So iPads, iPhones, laptops, uh, somewhere in the tune of 600,000 to 700,000 devices is what we provisioned for the U.S. Census Bureau. But the program at that point in time was having some problems, and it was a logistics issue and yeah. an efficiency issue. And myself, as well as some other individuals, were brought on to that effort to kind of help surge uh, some help. And we collectively, um, our group, was able to create some efficiencies which got us noticed uh, by the VP. And, and I'll, I'll tell people that my, my, my progression in my civilian career is not typical because but I will tell you that some of the same things that made you successful in the military will make you successful outside of the military. Um, I wasn't doing this for a spotlight ranger thing. We, we were part of a, an effort to generally look and see what the roadblocks were, and we unstuck those roadblocks. And that recognition got me promoted within my first six months with a Fortune 200 company, where I elevated from a program manager to a senior program manager still kind of had a lot of the same responsibilities, uh, but the starting pay is different between the levels. And the value that they saw that you bring to the organization uh, was the reason for the promotion. And additionally, uh, about a month after that, we have issues with uh, not enough managers oversighting some of our delivery efforts. And so I was asked to double hat and also help synchronize our efforts on deliveries for projects within the federal space. So currently today, I'm still a senior program manager uh, with a very specific responsibility of Air Force projects. And I'm double headed as a federal services and solutions delivery manager, in which uh, I make sure that we have resources aligned all the projects we're on the hook to deliver for the federal government so awesome yeah, and it's it's really a, i mean it's really remarkable to get promoted from let alone a, a program manager um in the type of space that we work in because it's kind of the cream of the crop already so you're a cw4 and <laughs> there's not a whole lot of <laughs> lot to go up and then in six months because your performance and you did such a great job and were so impressive um you ended up finding yourself uh with uh, that next job and, and that more responsibility that always comes with that because that's how the, the world works, right? Yeah. Um, no, yeah. it's, it really shows to your kind of that foundation that you built in the service, that education you had, and that perseverance of, of improvement of things that you're touching and, and kind of progress and, and, and develop that all throughout your career in the, the Army and then ending up uh, doing the same thing where we're working now. And I, I really appreciate working with you on that. Um, so sort of kind of switching gears a little bit on you, um, but what do you think you would have ended up doing? And you talked briefly about it earlier on, but if you didn't join the army or didn't join the military at all, what do you think you'd be doing kind of for the last 20 
to 30 years and um, where do you think your life would be different? Um, I mean, that's a great question. As far as what I think I would be doing, I would have found a way to make it. I mean, whether I was flipping burgers and, and, you know, up to owning a franchise, like I would have found some kind of way. Like uh, I'm competitive by nature, uh, type A um, personality for sure. And mediocrity doesn't sit well with me. So if I'm doing something, I want to do it well. Uh, but I would have found a, a way to, to probably break into a Fortune 200 company and um, just progress from there. Uh, it's it's interesting because part of my MBA program, I got to meet the executive officer for Starbucks, and she had no college education. She literally started with this company and just worked, you know, through hard work and performance, she progressed to where she was now, you know, like uh, the executive officer, if you will, for a Starbucks. And that was amazing to me. And I could see me very comfortably kind of being in, in a similar mindset uh, if I hadn't joined the military. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of people that have that drive just innate in them. It's really really great that you found that on your own I, I i found in my career that i i always joke that i probably would have been working at taco bell and probably still be there if it wasn't for the military <laughs> kind of that that kick in the pants and and saying that no you need to sort of not accept any kind of situation unless it's it's something that you truly want it, it kind of came to me and and gave me some direction so it's it's kind of it's great that you, you had that already and somebody didn't have to put a boot in your ass to get it going. I, I think, I think coming from the background that I had, a lot of us that have kind of messed up home life, the military gives us a structure where we can flourish and we can perform. And, you know, and I think it segues into your next question of was my biggest regret in the military. But um, for me, like I, I kind of wish that like I had a lot of growth, uh, I had a practice marriage, if you will, and uh, I got divorced around the 20-year mark uh, of my service, which was also one of the catalysts for me getting my education done. But understanding that your background has an effect of who you are as an adult, I didn't have that that awareness for a lot of the front end of my career. And so that need for family that I, I had it means to a lot of unhealthy relationships. Although professionally, my performance was always superb, my personal life was all, a lot of times suffered. So I think my biggest regret in my time from the service was just that I wish I had that awareness ahead of time how my past relationship with, you know, and the need for family affected me as a person. Um, because it was only until I, I had those recognitions that, and I was able to take ownership of areas that I could improve on and not own the things that weren't attributed to me, uh, was I able to grow as a person and, and, and fill some holes and actually heal uh, personally. And I, I look at the trajectory of what that could have done career-wise as well. Um, you know, I I performed, I feel I performed great for the circumstances that I had. Um, I could have been doing it a lot sooner had I awareness of, of how uh, your your baggage essentially holds you back from performing. And I think that's one of the things that if I can go back and talk to a younger version of me, I would I would work with myself on and, and give that awareness early. And it's because it, it's not just you, like you have to fix you in order to touch people around you. Right. And I also didn't realize the impacts that I had on people that were around me in being more of a force for good for people. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I would not realize when somebody uh, was generally inspired in, in building on that relationship. Um, so it was only after I was able to kind of get through my own healing and figure out things that were going on with me personally that I, I started having more of an awareness of how my own actions impacted others around me. And 
did the extra connections, reaching out to people, mentoring them more proactively. As an NCO, I mentored, but really having an understanding of connecting with somebody on the human dimension level and making sure that, uh, you know, I was able to help build people up and, and, and try to motivate them on a more personal level than, than I was used to doing. I think that's probably my biggest regret for my time in the service is just that I wish I could add a deeper awareness of my own baggage, cut it loose early, and then really just deepen connections around me with people that I had. So. With that being said, anything else you wanted to share, Jeff, that I, I might have missed out here? or No, I mean, the, one, the military has been a wonderful structure. It's been a wonderful organization for me to kind of really grow and thrive as, as a person. I, and I've met wonderful people and made lifelong friends from the military. Um, if they're watching, you know, I can't thank them enough for their input to who I am as a person today. Uh, their friendships, as well as the common experiences we shared help shape a lot of who I am. Uh, there's a lot of soldiers, NCOs, and leaders that went into shaping my success. And hopefully I give them back to all of them in some way. Um, I feel I have, but, you know, it's always good to know that it's reciprocated. Um, but for all my other brother, brothers and sisters in arms out there who is listening to Mark's channel, this is a great venue to share your story. If something in my own experiences, help somebody, that is that is the biggest compliment I could be paid. Like, my somebody came from a similar circumstance and how they're able to make it in the military and be successful. Uh, you know, it, it, it's definitely about sharing who, who we are as people, sharing our stories, and seeing if it touches somebody else out there. But Mark, thanks for giving me this platform to tell my, my story and, about my career. And uh, I look forward to seeing more content on your channel. Man. Thanks, Jeff. And, and again, thank you so much for uh, for spending the last uh, couple of hours with me. And uh, really do appreciate uh, <laughs> all that all you do to support our uh, brothers and sisters out there. And, and yeah, thank you very much for uh, telling your story. Amen. Yeah,